All right, thanks for watching. So today I want to present another kind of integral that's more general than Riemann integrals, but less general than Lebesgue integrals. It's sort of in between, but the nice thing is it's much easier to calculate than a Lebesgue integral. And it has this really funny name, which always makes me giggle when I hear it. It's the Stiltjes integral. So Stiltjes, sounds like Matthias, but you know. Steel yes, okay. <laughs> and by the way, this is totally improvised. I'm not using notes today. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna calculate the integral, let's say from zero to one, of x d. For Riemann integrals, you put dx, but here the difference between Riemann and Steel-Tiers integrals is that instead of integrating with respect to x, you integrate with respect to some function of x. And in fact, here, let alpha be x squared. So suppose you take x and sort of stretch it out with x squared. Let's see how to evaluate this. And for this, let me recall Riemann integration. And you'll see it's very similar to Riemann integrals. Right, so step one, you take your interval here, right? So the interval is 0, 1, and you chop it off into n pieces. So here's your prep work. Delta x, that's, you know, 1 minus 0 over m, and that's 1 over n. And I would, hold on one second, and then xi, that's, you know, 0 plus i delta x, and that's i over n. Okay. And then your Riemann, your Riemann integral usually, integral from 0 to 1 x dx, that's equal to the limit of the Riemann sums. So here you take the right point sums. Remember, this is if you want x i. This is xi minus 1, and this is your f of xi. So what you do, you take your Riemann sums, sum from 1 to n of f of xi, delta x, and you take the limit as n goes to infinity. Here comes the cool thing about steel case integrals. It's Almost the same definition, except the f of xi is still the same. The delta x, notice, you can indeed write this as, you know, xi minus xi minus 1. But here, because you're scaling your x in some weird way, instead of writing, first of all, instead of writing dx, you write d alpha x. And the only difference is, you're like scaling again your x in a different way. So instead of writing xi minus xi minus 1, you write alpha xi minus alpha xi minus 1. So it's as if, if you think of x as time, it's as if you're accelerating time in a way of alpha. Okay, but again, we're not too scared. It's almost the same integral. So let's calculate that integral from 0 to 1 of x dx that equals to limit n goes to infinity of sum i from 1 to n of f of xi, which is xi, which is i over n. And then alpha xi minus alpha xi minus 1 that's i over n squared minus i minus 1 over n squared. Let's limit n goes to infinity sum from 1 to n of i over n of, so we want to keep this 1 over n squared. That's pretty important, but the i squared we still have here, and then the i minus 1 squared, let's like expand it out. So i minus i squared plus 2i minus 1. And 
notice you do have a simplification here. This cancels out and you're left with limit n goes to infinity of sum from 1 to n of i over n cube, I guess, cube of 2i uh, minus 1. I just want to remark something that's very important. Remember that alpha x was x squared? Well, this 2i is like a 2x, which is alpha prime of x. And I will remark on this at the end because it turns out there's an easier way of doing steel case integrals. Let's expand that out. So it's limit n goes to infinity of integral for 1 to n of 2i over n cubed minus sum from 1 to n of, sorry, 2i squared okay, minus i over n cubed, and that becomes 2 over n cubed sum from 1 to n of i squared minus 1 over n cubed sum from 1 to n of i, and that's 2 over n cubed. And again, those are facts. You can ask Max for those facts. He's very good at those. By the way, Max got into UC Berkeley. I'm so happy for him. Okay, so go Bears. So this sum turns out it got it's n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6 minus 1 over n cubed of, I guess, n times n plus 1 over 2. I totally forgot the limits, so sometimes you get carried away. So limit n goes to infinity, limit n goes to infinity. The nice thing is, this is of degree 2, and this is of degree 3. So in fact, this junk goes to 0. And then let's just look at the leading orders here. That's the same as limit n goes to infinity of 2 over 6, which is 1 third. And then you have n times n times 2n, which is 2n cubed over n cubed, which becomes 2 thirds. Ta-da! So we get that the steel case integral here is 2 thirds. The integral from 0 to 1 of x, d alpha x, is 2 thirds here. For alpha x is x squared. And some people, they write it as follows. Integral from 0 to 1 of x, d x squared equals 2 thirds, 2 thirds. And that's just to illustrate the definition of the steel case integral. But it turns out in practice, it's much easier to evaluate those integrals because there is the Chen Lu. In other words, here's a oh my god way of doing those. So the oh my god way integral from 0 to 1 x d x squared by the Chen Lu d x squared right that's like d x squared over d x times d x that's 2 x d x it's not quite the Chen Lu but well it is a Chen Lu whatever I'm talking about okay it's a substitution strictly speaking so x times 2 x d x and that's I guess uh, 0, 1, 2x squared dx, and that becomes 2x cubed over 3 from 0 to 1, which is indeed 2 thirds, the same answer that we got. And in fact, this works for any smooth function. And the thing is, uh, why do we need the other part? Because turns out you can still define steel case integrals even if this is not smooth. And the way you do this is with the previous step. And um, I think
think this is very useful also in statistics because it allows us to define the expectation of a random variable or a function of a random variable where this function is not necessarily smooth. If it's smooth, it becomes like F integral of f prime x, but in general, um, you have to resort to the steel case integral. And here's maybe another example, like integral, I guess, you can also have discontinuous functions. So if you have integral x d alpha x, where alpha x, that's x if x is positive, and zero if x is negative, strictly speaking, you cannot use this uh, you know, differentiation formula, but if you use the other formula that's given to you, I guess not even that, if you use, if you just decompose it from minus two to zero of x d alpha x plus integral from zero to three of x d alpha x, then this is just zero, and this is, I guess, dx, and then it's in equal to integral from zero to three of x dx. So the point is the steel case integral also works for discontinuous functions in this way. All right, so I hope you had the steel case kind of time. <laughs> and if you like this integral and other integrals, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Improvised.